subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lesson from Rao's IA Study Circle. Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading from your UPSC perspective. Now today we shall discuss the important news which has appeared in the New Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper dated 30th August 2020. The news to be discussed has been displayed on your screen and time stamping for the same has been provided in your description box below. So on this note, let's start our today's discussion from our prelims as well as mains perspective. Now let's start our today's discussion with these three important news appearing on page number 8 as well as page number 9. Now this news says that India pulls out of Kavkaz due to China. So here in this particular news, you need to know about this term Kavkaz. Next news says that Turkey to hold exercises near Cyprus coast. Now in this news, you need to know about the location of Cyprus as location based questions can be asked in your upcoming prelims examination. And this particular news highlights that UAE puts an end to economic boycott of Israel. So this news highlights about improving relationship of UAE as well as Israel. So in this regard, these three news becomes important. So let's start our discussion with this particular news mentioning that India pulls out of Kavkaz due to China. So here it highlights that India has withdrawn its participation in Kavkaz 2020 multinational exercise in Russia which is to take place in September. And India has withdrawn because of Chinese participation as India does not want business as usual with China especially in the backdrop of confrontation with China in the Ladakh area including the Galwan Valley. So with respect to Kavkaz you need to know that Kavkaz is a multilateral defense exercise and it is scheduled to be held in Russia in September basically from 15 to 27 September and earlier India was supposed to participate as Russia had invited India however India has withdrawn from Kavkaz or the multilateral defense exercise now here it's important to understand that India has cited COVID as the official reason to withdraw from Kavkaz multilateral defense exercise however the real reason seems to be the presence of China as well as Pakistan in the Kavkaz military drill as both China and Pakistan are scheduled to participate in Kavkaz. Now the aim of Kavkaz is to provide real-time training to counter international terrorism in the region and this exercise Kavkaz is supposed to be held in the Astrakhan province of southern Russia where member countries of Shanghai Cooperation Organization as well as Central Asian countries would be participating. So in this regard you need to know about two aspects. First is with respect to the location of this Astrakhan province of southern Russia and second is about Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now as you can see in this map this area is Astrakhan province of southern Russia and it is close to Caspian Sea. So this is Astrakhan and this is Caspian Sea and if you look at the complete map of Russia this is where Astrakhan province lies in southern Russia. So again as we mentioned that location of this province becomes important with respect to this current events of international importance. Now with respect to Shanghai Cooperation Organization there are few basic points which you need to know. So it highlights that SCO is a permanent intergovernmental international organization and this is because the member countries have signed the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Charter. So accordingly the charter becomes the fundamental statutory document which outlines the organization's goals and principles as well as its structure and core activities. Further it says that the creation of SCO was announced in June 2001 in Shanghai in China by Republic of Kazakhstan, People's Republic of China, the Kyrgyz Republic, Russian Federation, Republic of Tajikistan as well as Republic of Uzbekistan and SCO was preceded by the Shanghai 5 mechanism. So again all these aspects becomes important from our prelims perspective. Further it highlights that SCO has two permanent bodies. First is the SCO secretariat and second is the executive committee of regional anti-terrorist structure that is RATS. This secretariat of SCO is located in Beijing and the executive committee of regional anti-terrorist structure is based in Tashkent. Another important aspect which you need to know is that SCO comprises of 8 member states, 4 observer states and 6 dialogue partners. With respect to 8 member states, these are Republic of India, Republic of Kazakhstan, People's Republic of China, Kyrgyz Republic, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Russian Federation, 
द रिपब्लिक ऑफ तजिकिस्तान एज वेल एज रिपब्लिक ऑफ उजबेकिस्तान सो हियर इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इंडिया चाइना रशिया एज वेल एज पाकिस्तान आर ऑल्सो द एट मेम्बर्स ऑफ शांघाई कॉपरेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फर्दर विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द ऑब्जर्वर स्टेट्स दीज आर अफगानिस्तान द रिपब्लिक ऑफ बेलारस द इस्लामिक रिपब्लिक ऑफ ईरान एज वेल एज रिपब्लिक ऑफ मंगोलिया एंड सिक्स डायलॉग पार्टनर्स इंक्लूड्स अजरबाईजान अर्मेनिया किंगडम ऑफ कम्बोडिया द फेडरल डेमोक्रेटिक रिपब्लिक ऑफ नेपाल रिपब्लिक ऑफ टर्की एज वेल एज श्रीलंका सो दीज आर द सिक्स डायलॉग पार्टनर्स विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू शांघाई कॉपरेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो ऑल दीज इन्फॉर्मेशन बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम योर फिल्म्स परस्पेक्टिव सो एज हाईलाइटेड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस न्यूज ऑन कवकाज यू नीड टू नो दैट दिस इज अ मल्टी लैटरल डिफेंस एक्सरसाइज एंड इट इज शेड्यूल्ड टू बी हेल्ड इन अस्त्रखान प्रोविंस ऑफ सदर्न रशिया ड्यूरिंग सेप्टेम्बर सो आफ्टर द डिस्कशन ऑन कवकाज लेट्स मूव ऑन टू दिस न्यूज ऑन टर्की Now the next news to be discussed is with respect to growing tensions between Greece as well as Turkey and this growing tension is with respect to disputed claims to exploration rights in the East Mediterranean so their disputed claims is somewhere around this area of the Mediterranean Sea so in this regard the location of Mediterranean Sea as well as the countries which opens up to Mediterranean Sea becomes important as UPSC has already asked similar questions in the past so in this regard let us go through this news with respect to dispute between greece as well as turkey so as we have already discussed that there is a growing dispute between turkey as well as greece and this growing dispute is with respect to claims to exploration rights in the east mediterranean sea so again in this regard this entire area becomes important with respect to their growing dispute now this particular news also highlights about cyprus which is located here close to turkey in the mediterranean sea now some of the important aspect here is that that both turkey and greece are nato members that is north atlantic treaty organization members and this dispute increased after both turkey and greece signed rival accords on their maritime boundary with libya as well as egypt now what also increased the dispute between turkey and greece was that both these countries held military exercises in the east mediterranean sea and it is in this regard even the european union is now thinking to impose sanction on turkey with respect to its stand off with greece as greece is a member of european union so these are some of the developments with respect to this particular news appearing on page number 9 now few important aspect here is that both turkey as well as cyprus have issued naftex notice now naftex refers to navigational text message and this notice is basically an advisory message to mariners saying that turkey will hold gunnery exercise so basically naftex notice has been issued both by turkey as well as cyprus now the naftex notice issued by cyprus says that notice by turkey is illegal that is this naftex notice issued by turkey is illegal and also violates territory of cyprus international law as well as maritime safety procedures so this is how cyprus has also got involved with respect to the dispute between greece as well as turkey so with respect to this particular news you need to know about naftex notice and also the location of cyprus turkey as well as greece especially with respect to the mediterranean sea now another important aspect to be noted is that naftex works on frequency of 518 kilohertz in the medium frequency band range now it says that naftex is an acronym for navigational telex or navigational text message and this is a device used on the ships to provide short range maritime safety information in coastal waters automatically naftex can be used in ships of all types and size and the area covered by naftex can extend as far as 400 nautical miles from the broadcast station now one nautical mile is equivalent to 1.852 kilometers so in this regard it says that the area covered by naftex can extend as far as 400 nautical miles from the broadcast station it further highlights that the naftex receiver on board prints out navigational and meteorological warnings and forecast as well as urgent marine safety information to ships further it says that it forms a vital element of global maritime distress safety system and naftex uses the feature of radio telex or narrow band direct printing for the automatic broadcast of information 
and it works on a frequency of 518 kilohertz in the medium frequency band. So these are some of the important aspects or information with respect to NAVTEX as question based on NAVTEX can be asked in the upcoming prelims examination. So after this discussion on growing dispute between Turkey and Greece, let's move on to our third news with respect to UAE puts an end to economic boycott of Israel. Now this particular news highlights that the President of United Arab Emirates has scrapped the economic boycott and has allowed resumption of trade, financial as well as technological agreements between the UAE as well as Israel. So this particular deal between UAE and Israel will help to normalize diplomatic as well as commercial relations between the two countries and this deal was brokered with the help of United States President Donald Trump. Now according to the US President, this deal has the potential to change or reshape the order of West Asia politics, especially with respect to issues pertaining to Palestine as well as fight against Iran. And it is in this regard that even Israel has agreed for this agreement referred as Abraham Agreement. And according to this agreement, Israel has committed to halt further annexation of Palestinian lands in the West Bank. So it is in this regard that this particular development becomes important with respect to current affairs of international importance. So overall this news says that abolishing of boycott law by UAE will allow United Arab Emirates to expand their commercial and diplomatic relations with Israel and this will lead to improved bilateral relations between the two countries and it will also improve relations in the West Asia politics. Further it says that UAE is the third Arab nation to reach such a deal with Israel after Jordan as well as Egypt. Now as for the Abraham agreement Israel will halt further annexation of Palestinian lands. So in this regard this news says that halting of annexation of Palestinian lands will bring more time for peace opportunities to progress especially with respect to the two state solution. Now here it's important to note that Palestine, Iran as well as Turkey has opposed this deal. Palestine has not approved of this particular accord. Iran has said that this deal is a huge mistake and Turkey has called the deal a hypocritical behavior of United Arab Emirates. Now the countries which have welcomed the deal are Jordan, Egypt, Bahrain, Oman, Germany, UK, Pakistan, France, Spain as well as India. Now in this regard even the United Nations Secretary General has said that he hoped the normalization of ties between Israel and UAE can help realize a two-state solution with the Palestinians. So here realizing two-state solution between Israel and Palestine becomes very important. Now here it's important to note that some of the Middle East countries have also backed this deal between Israel as well as UAE along with India. So India has agreed the resumption of ties between United Arab Emirates as well as Israel. And accordingly India has welcomed the deal brokered by United States between UAE as well as Israel. Now here the term two-state solution becomes important as you can see, a question was asked by UPSC in the prelims of 2018. The question was, the term two-state solution is sometimes mentioned in the news in the context of the affairs of. Options were China, Israel, Iraq and Yemen. Now two-state solution is with respect to Israel as well as Palestine. So here the correct answer was B, that is Israel. Further from the perspective of world geography as well as world map, you should know the location of UAE as well as Israel as a number of questions has been asked by UPSC especially with respect to Israel, Jordan as well as Mediterranean Sea. Let's go through those questions asked by UPSC in the past. Now let's take up these two questions asked in the year 2017 and 2015. The question asked in 2015 was which one of the following countries of Southwest Asia does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea? Options were Syria, Jordan, Lebanon and Israel. Now it's very difficult to answer such type of question unless and until we are well thorough with our map reading. Now these are the maps with respect to Jordan, Syria, Israel as well as Lebanon. Now in this map we find out that Jordan does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea whereas Lebanon, Syria as well as Israel does open out to the Mediterranean Sea. So in this the correct answer was B that is Jordan. As you can see that Jordan does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea. 
Now let's see this question. The question was Mediterranean Sea is a border of which of the following countries? Options were again Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon and Syria. Now we have already seen that Jordan does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea and even Iraq does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea. So again here Iraq becomes a wrong or incorrect option. Now with respect to Lebanon and Syria we found out that Lebanon as well as Syria both opens out to the Mediterranean Sea. So in this regard the correct option becomes 3 and 4. So here the question was select the correct answer using the code given below. So our correct answer was C that is 3 and 4 only. Now moving on to this particular question asked by UPSC in 2019. Now again the question was consider the following pairs Adriatic Sea, Albania, Black Sea, Croatia, Caspian Sea, Kazakhstan, Mediterranean Sea, Morocco and Red Sea, Syria. So we understand that questions have been asked by UPSC in the prelims examination repeatedly on Mediterranean Sea. Now as you can see in this map this is Adriatic Sea and this is Albania. So the first option becomes correct. Now with respect to Black Sea and Croatia we do not find Croatia with respect to Black Sea. Rather Croatia is situated close to Adriatic Sea. So in this the second option becomes incorrect. Now with respect to Kazakhstan yes it is situated close to Caspian Sea. So after knowing that Croatia is not close to Black Sea, we can rule out option A, option C as well as option D. So our correct answer here becomes 1, 3 and 4 as even Syria is not close to Red Sea whereas Morocco is close to Mediterranean Sea. So these three news becomes important from the perspective of current events of international importance as well as world geography from your prelims perspective. So with this let's move on to our next topics of discussion. Further let's discuss these three news appearing on page number 6, page number 8 as well as page number 11. The news appearing on page number 6 says that butterflies are migrating early in southern India this year and change in rainfall pattern and a considerable increase in the number of sunny days could be among the reasons. Now this particular news highlights that there has been an early migration of butterflies from eastern ghats to western ghats as earlier the migration used to take place on the onset of northeast monsoon so that used to take place around october to november time period whereas this annual migration of butterflies has started early and has been spotted in june as well as in august so in this regard the news says that the first migration of these butterflies was sighted around the parambiculum tiger reserve which is in kerala around 21st of August. Now among the butterflies which were sighted most were blue tiger as well as dark blue tiger butterflies as both these butterflies accounted for around 90% of the entire migration. Now another important news highlighted here is that thousands of these butterflies have died because they have been hit by vehicles along their migratory path. So again in this regard this early migration of butterfly becomes important. So here you need to understand that on the onset of northeast monsoons these butterflies migrate towards the western ghats around October to November. So this is the usual period in which these butterflies migrate. However this news highlights that this annual migration of butterflies have started early this year around. Now further these butterflies migrate back to the eastern ghats in April to June period before the arrival of southwest monsoon. So basically these butterflies are looking forward to sunny days and because of change in rainfall pattern and early rainfall in the eastern ghats these butterflies have started to migrate early. So the reasons for migration can be said to be early rainfall as early rainfall also indicates change in rainfall pattern around the eastern ghats. Further the migration has also taken place early because of considerable increase in number of sunny days along the western ghats. So it is in this regard that this migration of butterflies have started early. So in this regard this news highlights that temperature acts as a biological trigger for these butterflies and based on this biological trigger they start their annual migration. So overall we can say that changing migration pattern of butterflies is a direct indication on two things. First changing weather pattern and second climate change. So from your previous perspective you need to know about annual migration of butterflies which takes place from eastern ghat to western ghat on the onset of northeast monsoon and from western ghat to eastern ghat on the onset of southwest monsoon.
Further, this news says that the first migration have been sighted around the Parambikulam Tiger Reserve. So in this regard, you need to know about the Parambikulam Tiger Reserve. Now, as you can see in this map, this is the Parambikulam Tiger Reserve and it is very close to the Annamalai Tiger Reserve. Now, Parambikulam Tiger Reserve is located in Kerala. Now, as you can see, it highlights that Parambikulam Tiger Reserve is a well-protected ecological portion in Niliampathi Annamalai landscape of southern western Ghats in India and it is located in the Palakkad district of Kerala. It further says that it is one of the biodiversity hotspot in the world which supports diverse habitat types and endemism. So these can be said to be some of the important aspects with respect to Parambikulam Tiger Reserve and it is situated in the southern western Ghats in the state of Kerala. So after understanding this news on page number 6, let's move on to this news on Char Dham project on page number 8. It says that environmentalist petition PM on Char Dham project. So with respect to this news, you need to know about a committee formed by Supreme Court and also about the Char Dham project initiated by the present government. So this news highlights that a group of 40 scientists, environmentalists as well as ecologists have written to the Prime Minister of India to halt the Char Dham road construction work which is being carried out in Uttarakhand. Now these people have asked the government to hear recommendation of environmentalist Ravi Chopra who heads a Supreme Court formed high power committee. Now again here you need to know about the Char Dham project which is basically the project to widen roads to improve access to pilgrimage spots in Uttarakhand. So it is in this regard that this news highlights that environmentalists have petitioned the Prime Minister to halt the Char Dham road construction work basically on environmental concerns. Now the Char Dham project was supposed to be completed by March 2020. However, the completion of the work was delayed due to litigation in National Green Tribunal as well as Supreme Court. Now the Supreme Court of India in August 2019 constituted a high-powered committee which was chaired by Ravi Chopra. And this committee was formed to look into environment related issues and other issues pertaining to road construction along the Char Dham project. Further, the high-powered committee constituted by the Supreme Court was mandated to submit its report by December 2019. However, this tenure was further extended to June 2020. Now, with respect to the report to be submitted by this high-powered committee, two reports emerged from this entire exercise. One report was referred as the main report which was prepared by Ravi Chopra and three other members and there was an other report which was prepared by 16 members of the core committee. Now the main report which was prepared by Ravi Chopra recommends narrower road construction whereas the other report recommends wider road construction along the Char Dham project. Now this matter as of now is sub judice as it will be heard by the Supreme Court on coming Monday that is tomorrow. So in this particular news we need to know about the Char Dham project of the government of India. Now this project is being implemented by three agencies of Ministry of Road Transport and Highways by Uttarakhand State Public Works Department, Border Road Organization and also by National Highway and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited. Now under this project, stabilization of chronic landslides and sinking spots or zones are also part of road widening projects and this is included as part of road widening projects to avoid landslide and ensure safety for road users. Further with respect to construction of roads, bioengineering methods have been employed like hydro seeding are being used for vegetative growth on fragile slopes for their stability. So all these measures especially with respect to these bioengineering methods shall safeguard the highway and habitation against natural calamity. So these are some of the important aspects with respect to works under Char Dham project. So basically Char Dham project pertains to widening of roads to improve access to pilgrimage spots in Uttarakhand and it is initiated by the government of India. So after understanding about the Char Dham project, let's understand about the tree of life that is African Baobab as it can live for over a thousand years. Further, the Baobab tree is also useful because it yields fodder, medicinal compounds and many such products. Further, a recent study has found that the tree has 168 chromosomes and this information will be useful in genetic conservation efforts for the baobab tree. Now the baobab tree is native to African savanna and it grows in dry and arid climate. 
and it also bears a fruit which has a very high nutritious value. So overall we can say that the baobab tree is native to African savanna where the climate is extremely dry and arid. Further the tree has adapted to the environment and is also a succulent which means that during the rainy season it absorbs and store water in its vast trunk and this enables to produce a nutrient dense fruit in the dry season when all around the region is dry and arid. And because of the pulpy and nutritious fruit of baobab tree, the tree came to be known as tree of life. Further, it says that the baobab tree can live for up to 5000 years and reach up to 30 meters high and can cover a circumference of around 50 meters. Further, it says that baobab trees can provide shelter, food and water for animals as well as humans, which is why many savanna communities have made their homes near the baobab trees. Now this again becomes an important aspect with respect to the baobab trees. Further it says that the tree's fruits are largely pods known as monkey bread or cream of tartar fruit and they produce a dry fruit pulp that is highly nutritious. Now some of the benefits of baobab tree and fruits can be said to be that it's a good source of many important vitamins as well as minerals as the pulp is high in vitamin C, antioxidants and several key minerals like potassium, magnesium, iron as well as zinc. Further, the seeds and edible parts of the plant are loaded with fiber, fat, as well as micronutrients like thiamine, calcium, as well as iron. Further, the baobab also helps in reducing the sugar level. Now, baobab is also packed with antioxidants and polyphenols and also helps in reducing body inflammation. Now, polyphenols are micronutrients which we get through certain plant-based foods and are packed with antioxidants and potential health benefits and baobab is also a good source of fiber. So these can be said to be some of the benefits with respect to baobab tree as well as fruit. So this particular news with respect to the African baobab becomes important as this term can be asked in your upcoming prelims examination. So if it is asked then you know that it is a native tree to African savanna area which grows in the dry and arid climate of Africa. Now these three news becomes important from the perspective of general issues on environmental ecology, biodiversity as well as climate change. With this let's move on to our next news of discussion. The next news to be discussed appears on page number 12 in the FAQ section. It says US vote amid COVID. Now what is the debate around mail in postal ballot system in the upcoming American presidential election in November? So the debate going on in America is with respect to the mail-in postal ballot system or postal ballot with respect to the upcoming presidential elections of November 2020. Now Donald Trump and certain section of Republicans believe that postal ballot might lead to electoral malpractices whereas Democrats and certain section of Republicans disagree with the view of Donald Trump as Donald Trump says that if postal voting is allowed for US presidential election, it will lead to large scale malpractices. Now here it's important to understand that the voting process in United States is very diverse and different as compared to India. And unlike India, they do not have any central authority. Whereas in India, the central authority for conducting election is the Election Commission of India, which guides the entire process with respect to the conduct of elections in India. So this voting process which takes place in US is very diverse and the laws depends on different states. For example, some states may ask for some kind of identity card whereas other states including Washington DC do not ask for any identity cards. So in this regard, the US president wants stricter norms for ID checking so as to avoid any malpractices. Whereas the Democrat says that stricter rules might disenfranchise minority population and also such population which are less educated. So this is the problem with respect to diverse electoral laws in United States. Now with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic, several states in United States have relaxed the rules, especially with respect to postal voting in the wake of COVID-19. And this step has been taken by the states to encourage people not to go to polling booths and rather vote through the postal ballot system. And this time it is estimated that around 80 million votes shall be casted through postal ballot in United States for the presidential election to be held in November 2020. However, Donald Trump has said that 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent elections in US history. However, certain practices has been taken care of 
with respect to checking malpractices through postal voting. It says that only people with current voter registrations can receive a ballot by mail. However, this process is very diverse as already mentioned as United States does not have a central authority like the Election Commission of India. So this news highlights about the controversy going on in United States, especially with respect to allowing of voting through postal ballot for the upcoming presidential election in November 2020. The next news to be discussed also appears in the FAQ section on page number 12. It says, what is the new idea on supply chains? Now, why has Japan mooted the supply chain resilience initiative? So this news highlights that Japan has mooted the supply chain resilience initiative as a trilateral approach to trade and the trilateral approach includes India, Australia as well as Japan. Now the whole purpose of including or initiating the supply chain resilience as a trilateral approach to trade including Japan, India as well as Australia is the diversification of supply risk across group of nations. Now Japan believes that amid COVID-19 no nations can depend on any one country or few countries especially with respect to their global supply chain and it is here where Japan has initiated the supply chain resilience initiative so that the supply chain is not dependent on any one or few countries and here the sole target is on China as Japan wants that the supply chain slowly shifts away from China towards India, Australia as well as Japan. As according to Japan, supply chain should not be affected either by natural events or by man-made disasters. Now this initiative of Japan is very significant because Japan has included India despite the fact that India opted out of RCEP that is Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Now with respect to trade between Japan and China, it's important to understand that Japan exported goods worth $135 billion in 2019 to China whereas it imported goods worth $169 billion from China. So overall 24% of Japan's total import was dependent on China in 2019. So any halt in the import due to any reason including a pandemic can choke economic activity in Japan. So considering this aspect of sole dependency on China Japan has initiated the supply chain resilience initiative and has included India and Australia as a trilateral approach to trade so that these countries do not have to depend solely on China. Further, this initiative is also a byproduct of US-China trade tensions as the US-China trade tensions have alarmed the Japanese economic circles and they do not want to get embroiled between, between the US-China trade issues. Further, Japan is also eyeing India as Japan is currently the fourth largest investor with foreign direct investment touching around $33.5 billion for the year 2002-2020. Another reason is that Japan, Australia and India along with United States already form the informal quadrilateral groupings. And Japan has also included Australia in the backdrop of declining trade relation between Australia as well as China. Further, India-China clash along the LAC also ensures that India may be ready for an alternative supply chain. So these are the reasons why Japan has initiated the supply chain resilience initiative which includes India, Australia as well as Japan. Now from your prelims perspective, this topic gets covered under current events of international importance as well as Indian economy. And from your mains, it gets covered under GS paper 2, especially with respect to international relations and under GS paper 3 with respect to supply chain management. So in this news analysis, you need to know about the supply chain resilience initiative by Japan, which also includes India as well as Australia as a trilateral approach to trade. Now after our discussion, this becomes your practice question for the day. The question is, supply chain resilience initiative has been proposed by Japan and includes options are A, India and China, B. Australia and China C. India and Australia and D. None of the above Now coming to the answer of yesterday, the question was consider the following statements First, India and Japan have signed a nuclear deal Yes, this is correct Second, this is the first time Japan has signed a deal with a non-NPT signatory Yes, this is also correct So the question was which of the statements given above is are correct So here the correct answer is C That is both 1 and 2 
with this we come to an end to today's discussion thank you